So just before the video starts, I would just like to say a huge thank you for everyone that has supported me so far, has commented, liked the videos, shared it with friends and other artists. The, the channel's grown recently and it's been absolutely amazing. I really just want to thank everyone that keeps coming back and sending me really positive and really encouraging messages because I know my content isn't the best out there, it's something I'm always trying to work on and trying to improve. The fact that people are reaching out saying they like it and they want me to do more really means a lot so I just wanted to say thank you at the start of the video. Okay so today what I want to talk about I've seen online and I have had several messages several misconceptions about art and things I think people are doing wrong or their mindsets are wrong with art as a career so I want to address some of those things today and hopefully help some of you guys out. This is Sam from the future. So I've just finished recording and I've realized the probably the most important point I make is closer to the end of the video. So if you're not enjoying what I'm talking about in the next five minutes, I know you people do leave, then maybe watch the last five minutes because I think it's an important point that a lot of people need to listen to. And if you still hate it, then, then you can leave. Okay, so the first thing that I want to mention and this is something I really struggled with until not too long ago. So many people get caught up in speed. Don't worry, if you're not a professional level yet, don't worry about speed. Now I know if you're a concept artist or, or want to be a concept artist, everyone tells you you've got to be fast. Yes, you have. That is part of the role. And obviously you need to learn techniques that allow you to become faster but that shouldn't be what you're thinking about at the start. So this answer really does depend on where you are as an artist and how close you are to becoming a professional. But if you're just starting out, don't worry about it. I've seen people post work online going, oh, I did a 15 minute speed paint, but it's not to a professional standard. My mindset is, well, spend another 45 minutes on it to push it to a better standard because you can clearly spend more time to improve this. So don't work fast for the sake of working fast. What you need to do is work on your fundamentals and you can spend as long as you want working on those. And if you start to reach a good standard that you think is probably close to being professional, that's when you need to start taking what you've already learned and start bringing in new professional practices that will help you speed up. So as an example, you're creating a landscape scene with trees or well, use a tree brush if you need to speed up the process. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to draw the tree in the first place. So I think there should be a linear process of you learning the correct way, but then at the end taking the shortcuts. You shouldn't be taking shortcuts as a beginner because you end up in loads of problems. You see it a lot with people who try to photo bash without an understanding of composition or values and it just doesn't work because they're trying to miss a step. The fundamentals are, are the first thing you should focus on and ignore speed. So another thing I've heard come up quite a lot are people asking me how do you paint in that style or how do you know how to get a style, when did you get your style as a professional? All those kind of questions about style in general and the reality of it is the same as the last point learn your fundamentals first because if you know how to draw and paint if you have a understanding of how to create form in any way then you'll be able to break down any style that you like and recreate it so if you're seeing a style you love and you're like how the, how do they do that i can't get to grips with how they do that it's because you don't have the fundamental skill there, not because you don't understand the style. So you shouldn't be asking the question, how do I do that style? You should be asking the question, how do I get to that skill level? How do I become that good as an artist? Not how do I paint in that very particular way? And I've done a video on this talking about how to paint like Blizzard, but you'll notice in those videos, I'm talking about fundamental skills, so I'm talking about design, I'm talking about colour theory, shape language, all of those things make up fundamentals. And if you don't understand those and if you can't use those, then you're not going to be able to replicate the artist you like. 
Now of course you can do master studies, so if you have an artist you really like, you can try to copy their work to, to get to grips with understanding their work. But if you can't produce attractive images or successful images in the first place, then style isn't the problem, the fundamentals are. So something I've seen more and more recently, and I don't know if it's because I noticed it and then I keep noticing it or if it's always been the case, but I've seen a lot of artists uploading images that are clearly painted over photographs and they're acting like they're not. They're saying they have painted them from scratch in a hyper-realistic style and it's just not true. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have done it. I can't guarantee that they haven't, but I would say I am 99% sure that they have painted over a photo because there are always artifacts and details in a photo that no one human would paint. There's aspects of photos that you just wouldn't add unless you had to. And then where they have painted over or used filters over, any professional, when they see that, they know those filters. They know what looks like it's been painted and what hasn't. And I've seen it recently and people are lying and saying they've painted it. And I actually, I don't mind if you paint over photographs. If you, t if you upload an image and say, I've painted over this photograph, what do you think? It can be amazing, fantastic. It's a very valid process, but you lying about it is the issue. And the reason for that is because you're essentially lying to yourself for gratification from people you don't know. So if you're one of those people that uploads and you, you know you need likes to feel like a successful artist, really think about why you need that, that gratification from people you don't know. So like, I've had it myself, it's, it's really easy to do. You associate your self-worth with how many likes or follows you get online. But trust me, that is not the case. Your artwork, unless you're popular, is going to be very hard to see online. It's going to get lost in the ocean of other people's artwork being uploaded. So don't feel bad if something doesn't get as many likes as you want it to, or your friends have, or professionals you see have. You can get there, but trust me, it's volume. It's not quality. If you upload terrible art over and over and over, you'll end up with more followers than a professional who uploads once a year. That's the simple realism of uploading nowadays online. So if, if you're cheating, if you're lying, if you're saying things are taking you less time than they actually are, if you're lying about your processes, just think about why you're doing that, why you feel like you need to. Be honest, say you're learning, and you'll get good constructive feedback. And you'll feel happier about it as well. You'll feel happier about yourself and what you're achieving as an artist because it's real. And you, you trust me, you don't have to lie. If you're not a professional yet, you lying will be obvious. So don't do it. So one thing that's basically become a meme over the years is professionals always joke about it. People asking them what brushes they use. I've had it quite a lot myself. Uh, you'll upload content of quite a complex painting and someone will say, what brushes do you use? And I'm quite an advocate of using just a standard round brush. That's how I learned for years. And what's interesting is that question will be asked by people that are just starting out and people that are professionals. You, you won't get people in the middle who are learning and improving. They won't really ask for brushes often because they, they tend to have the mindset of, well, I'm improving, I need to use the standard round brush. But beginners will always ask for it, even though they wouldn't know how to use it. And professionals often ask for it because in a studio, as an example, you might see a friend use a brush in a new and inventive way and think, oh, I need to use that. That's a great method. So as, especially as a concept artist trying to replicate speed, you're going to use shortcuts, you're going to use new brushes and you will ask friends for them. But it's just interesting. I've never had a professional ask me for brushes on my YouTube channel because they usually create them themselves or they ask friends or get them from when, you know, where they know they can get them. But the people that tend to ask tend to be beginners. And I have no problem with people asking me for brushes and it doesn't bother me at all. But what I'll say is they don't solve anything. If you don't know, again, it goes back to fundamentals. It's going to get boring this video, but if you don't know how to paint with a round brush, you cannot paint. 
with a textured one. So the one I'm going to finish up on, and I think this is probably the most important one for me and as a beneficial, motivational mindset to, to give people that are listening, if you're struggling with this, I think this is important. And that is, you're never too old to change careers. I've had loads of people contact me saying, I'm in my 30s, or even I'm in my 40s, and I want to be an artist, I have a pretty good job, can I quit and become an artist? And my answer is always the same, and that is, I don't know, you tell me. I can't tell you if you can quit your job. I don't know what your responsibilities are. If you have two children and a mortgage, then you probably can't quit your job. But that doesn't mean you can't pursue art. It doesn't mean you can't do it in your spare time and your evenings and whenever you get a spare chance to work towards that goal. Quite simply, it doesn't even have to be art. I would just say, if you're not happy doing what you're doing, try to find a way not to do it anymore. So if you're an artist and you're not enjoying it, then find something that does make you happy and do that. Life is too short to be sad with what you're doing, especially with the way we work nowadays, which I don't agree with, but we work five days a week, long hours often. And if you don't enjoy that, that's a lot of your life is being wasted. You can't just live for the weekend. So as a piece of advice, You can always change your mind. You can always change your career. So I've had a lot of people that are really young going into university saying they want to be concept artists, but they don't really know what that means. And after a few years, they they don't really love art anymore. At least they don't love concept art and the processes of concept art. And they feel really despondent because they feel like they've wasted their university life and they've wasted their young professional careers chasing something that they're not going to do and I personally think that's fine as long as you start to enjoy what you're doing and if you work towards what you want to do then it's okay at university you're going to gain life experience no matter if you do a career in your subject matter or not so don't act like you know exactly what you want to do because I don't think anyone does and you just need to do what you think is right in that moment. And if in that moment you think you want to do a uh, become a role in a, in a concept artist in a studio, then great, chase that. And if that changes 10 years down the line, that's fine too. My career has been quite varied so far. I've worked in theme park design, I've worked in fashion design, concept art, book cover illustrations. And I realized that I was pushing towards more illustration work than concept art. And that was only really recently just because I was starting to enjoy the process more of illustration. And that's fine. I wanted to be a concept artist for a really long time and then I started to push towards illustration. That's great. And to be completely honest, I have actually recently just changed jobs. I'm now a university lecturer and I've only just started, but it's been absolutely amazing. So I've transitioned from being an artist to a lecturer and so far I'm really enjoying it and hopefully Um, It'll be a really good career path for me for the next 10, 20, 30 years. But who knows? In 10 years, I might fall out of love with it and want to move on. That is life. That is something that we get told this lie that you need to find your career at the age of 21, stick with it in the rest of your professional career. And that's simply not true. And that mindset makes people feel really inadequate when they do want to change. And it makes them feel like a failure. And I personally think if you're brave enough to stand up and say, I'm not enjoying this, I'm going to go do what I do enjoy, then you're definitely not a failure. Uh, I think that's a success. So that's basically where I'm going to end it. I hope that has helped some people uh, or someone out there because I've been getting a lot of those messages of people feeling down and sad that they're not achieving what they want to achieve, even though they're maybe 25 35, 45, whatever the age is, it doesn't matter. Just keep working towards your goals, keep improving, and let me know how you get on. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, or liking the video, and I will see you in the next one.